and apparently it's unchanged as it was 1,000 years ago. Beneath our feet, a hidden world of archaeology is waiting to be discovered. Welcome back to the channel everyone and welcome to Hatfield Forest. Hatfield Forest is a site of scientific interest, a protected national nature reserve and a historical time capsule. What you see here is unchanged and as it was 1,000 years ago. Like many ancient woodlands and forests in England, this too has never been subjected to agriculture. It has never been ploughed. And so, beneath our feet, a hidden world of archaeology is waiting to be discovered. Hidden within this forest is an Iron Age site and a medieval rabbit warren, which is now listed as a scheduled monument. Interestingly, Hatfield Forest is the only remaining intact royal hunting forest and dates from the time of the Norman kings. It was once part of a much larger forest too and would have been joined with Epping Forest, Hainault Forest and Rissel Forest. Hatfield Forest was established as a royal hunting forest in the late 11th century following the introduction of fallow deer here in England. Deer hunting and chasing was a popular sport for the Norman kings and lords and the word forest strictly means place of deer rather than of trees. In the case of Hatfield, the area under forest law consisted of woodlands with plains. Okay, I mentioned earlier that Hatfield Forest is made up of both forest and planes. Now we've got an airplane going over us at the moment, so I'm just gonna hold out for that to pass. I don't know what flight it is. Let's have a little look, Diana. Can you see? It, it looks like a that's, that's a Ryan airplane, everybody just flying above us somewhere. Behind there somewhere. But here we can actually see behind us where Hatfield Forest is made up of both forest and of course these incredible plains. So deer would have certainly have used all of this area during those, during the medieval period and even right up till now. And apparently it's unchanged as it was 1,000 years ago. The forest has passed hands many times over the centuries. Firstly, being held by the crown, then given to Isabel of Huntington, who would later marry into the Bruce family. After the Bruce family downfall in England, the forest returned once more to the crown until it was then passed to the de Bowen family. The forest continued to exchange hands, resulting in a succession of disputes over ownership and rights in the forest. This ownership battle continued for more than 200 years and lasted between 1612 and 1729. It was eventually purchased that year by the Hublin family. It is believed the Hublins sought the help of Capability Brown. As a result, the lake was created and exotic trees planted. A picnic house was constructed overlooking the lake and in 1759, it was decorated using British and tropical shells. By 17 year old, 
Letitia Hublin. This shell house can still be visited today. Not far from Hatfield Forest is Stansted Airport. As a result, we are on a direct flight path. Over the years, there have been two airplane crashes here in this forest, but luckily not passenger flights. But at the same time, these two crashes sadly caused the deaths of 10 people. Some of the important archeological remains here in Hatfield Forest includes the Portingbury Rings or Hills and the Warren area. Now, I must admit it's extremely hard to navigate around this woodland because it's not very clearly signposted and you can easily get lost if you're not careful. Um, we are in the north of the forest at the moment. We've been hunting out those old earthworks. They're not very big, but we have lots of ditch work here along this section here and I noticed some earthworks out in the back. So it, the site is probably too small to be a hill fort but quite incredible that the history of this little spot that I'm standing in now dates back to the Iron Age period. So we're looking at before the Romans arrived here in England. We are just standing in the area known as Portingbury Hills. The archaeological finds here date to the Iron Age and include a small flint blade, pot shards, animal bones, burnt flint and charcoal. As a result, the earthworks at Portingbury are most likely Iron Age, although it's believed the site is too small to be a hill fort. Perhaps it was more of an outlook post and perhaps a much larger Iron Age settlement existed close by, outside the boundaries of the forest. It would have made a great hunting shelter during the Iron Age period. You can actually, see, it's, it's probably hard to see on the camera everybody, but you can actually see a small area of earthworks just here and there's flint here as well so this is certainly one of those areas or part of the iron age fort and this chalk is off, was often used this chalk was often used as the base of their houses, their roundhouses. They have like a chalk floor. And that's often found in Bronze Age, Neolithic, prehistoric homes. And there's quite a bit of chalk scattered across here as well. Okay, well, no luck finding any flint tools or any Iron Age pottery sherds. It was worth a look, for, although admittedly I only gave it five minutes of searching anyway. And Yana's just sitting down here. I might have a quick search on the other side because I can see the earthworks actually continue around this angle. So you can actually follow the flow of this ditch work here. Well, it doesn't seem as prominent on this side. I'm definitely walking on it. I'm walking right in the centre of those earthworks. But they don't stand out as much as they do on the other side, apart from this ditch work here. Ah, oh, there we go. This is better. Now there has been a bit of archeological study in this area and they 
as previously mentioned, I have found a few interesting little artifacts. The Warren was created for rabbits in an area of existing mounds. Warren Cottage was built for the Warrener and the Forest Lodge for the Head Woodsman. Okay, just behind me we've got Forest Lodge. Beautiful little cottage chucked away here in Hatfield Forest. Shortly we will be heading towards the medieval rabbit warrens. Rabbits were brought here to England by the Normans and they employed a warrener to safeguard them. Okay, what we have just over there in the distance, everybody, that's actually Warren House. Stunning little old building. And then all around us, this would be known as the actual Warren area. So this is where those old medieval Warrens would have been kept and have been kept for over a near enough a thousand years. There we go, look, we've got some warrens here, Yana. And these are built onto a, like a mound. Oh, look at that, and Yana has found herself a little tiny fairy door. Oh, that's quite sweet, isn't it? Look at that little fairy door, everybody. Is it open? No. Yeah, that's quite sweet, isn't it? <laughs> this warren is the best preserved example of a medieval rabbit warren in England. And for the wildlife here in Hatfield Forest, there has been recorded 58 species of bird, 8 species of bat. Amongst mammals to be seen at the forest are fallow deer, muntjac deer, fox, grey squirrel, rabbit, weasel and hedgehog. There are badger sets, but badgers being nocturnal are rarely seen. Two herds of red pole cattle graze the plains in the traditional manner. Sheep are used as conservation grazers for areas that have been cleared of scrub. And there are over 400 species of plant and trees. As for the trees, 800 have been classified as being ancient, some of which are over 1,200 years old. And of a special note are the huge pollarded oaks and hornbeams. The most famous tree in the forest was the doodle oak, which was one of the largest trees ever to grow in England. It last bore green leaves in 1858, and its site is marked in the north of the forest. The doodle oak was a celebrated tree, one of the two stoutest trees ever measured in England, with a circumference of 18.2 metres. It started to grow in about 950 AD. Leaves last grew in 1858, making it 908 years old when it died. A very old tree and a very large one. The actual tree no longer exists, but the forest contains the fenced off remains of the doodle oak in the northwest corner on the edge of Elmans Green. It is believed that the tree began growing about 950. It is mentioned in the Domesday Book of 1086 and by 1630 was a significant landmark. It was thought 
to be one of the largest trees by circumference in England. It's such a shame, it no longer exists, but we are actually in that area where Doodle Oak once existed all those years ago. For the last part of this video, Yana and I will be sharing some beautiful footage of this incredible forest. And whilst you sit back and watch, we would both like to thank you for taking the time to explore this forest with us. Until next time, stay safe, keep well, and bye for now. Bye everybody and thank you.